Um, welcome everyone, excited to have all of you here today. Thank you to Mike and the team at the Chamber. Uh, so to get the ball rolling, what I like to do is I use the chat box a whole lot. So since it's a lot of us, if you guys have questions, put it in the chat box. I'm going to spend a lot of time going and take a look through it and answer your questions. Um, also, at the end, um, I'm going to open up all the line. If you want to ask your questions live, you're welcome to. This is going to be very engaging. I want you to guys to participate so that you all get some value out of this. So to get the ball rolling, um, you could put that in the chat. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? You could type yes if you do in the chat. Type yes if you do, if you have a LinkedIn account. Let's see, you got yes, Patty, Stephen, Mary, Robin. Yes, yes, that's good. So all of you have a LinkedIn account. I love it. Second piece is how many of you use LinkedIn at least three times a week? Let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right? You could tell me yes if you do in a chat. No, yes, no, no, okay. Good, good, no, no, okay. All right, so this is the perfect class for you. So if you're a beginner, you're just getting started with LinkedIn, you wanna know, okay, what's this big buzz about LinkedIn? How can I use it? And this is perfect for you. All right, next is what is your expectation for today's training? In the chat, one quick one-liner, what would you like to get out this training today? You could put that in a chat. Just one quick one-liner, one thing, and I'll shout it out. Get more comfortable with it. Yes, Robin, that's fantastic. Basics, Patty, great. We're going to talk about that. Basics overview, perfect. Improving profile, great, Bill. More followers, Steven, I love it. All right, basics, basics. Improve profile, Mike, love it. How to be more proactive with my listings. Uh, good. I'll definitely share some tips on things you can do there. That's fantastic. Exposure. Business account post versus article. Good. We'll talk about that, Robert. Generate business leads. Good, good, good. Target audience. Perfect. Wow. I love it. You guys are great. All right. So since we kind of have a good idea, a lot of people want to learn the basic, the profile, the content. This is the first series, right? Because we have a three-part series, um, LinkedIn Beginner. We have Advanced LinkedIn, Focus on Sales Navigator, and we got Expert for LinkedIn, focus on LinkedIn advertising. So today's session is gonna be a lot about beginners. So basic things that you need to do on LinkedIn from profile to company page to posting content, all right? And then the next one in August, we're gonna dive deep into prospecting using a tool called Sales Navigator. However, if you have questions, don't hesitate to put it in the chat, all right? So to get the ball rolling a uh, little bit, the agenda is very simple, I'm gonna share my story. Uh, new LinkedIn features. We're going to talk a bit about that a little bit. Uh, your LinkedIn profile, how to stay top of mind. Uh, networking on LinkedIn, two strategies uh, that you guys can use. So to get the ball rolling, first, um, originally from Haiti. Uh, this month, make it 21 years since I've been in the States. I speak three languages. English is my third. Uh, top 40 under 40 in marketing communication. Uh, feature in Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, a few other publications. Um, been an entrepreneur for 14 years now. I have an MBA. I'm an adjunct professor. I host a podcast for Small Biz Tips. It's on iTunes and Spotify. You guys are welcome to check it out. I am the owner of AGM. We solely specialize on LinkedIn. And we've been fortunate to work with over 590 clients in 14 countries and three continents the past seven years. So, with that said, why is LinkedIn important? Let's start with the most basic questions, okay? And I wanna share something with you. On LinkedIn, as of this year, there are 690 million members. And we're talking professionals in 200 plus countries. You have 160 plus in the US, you got 43 million plus in Brazil, 150 million plus in Europe. So. Think about your business right now. If you're not restricted to geography, meaning you can do business anywhere in the world, LinkedIn should be part of your marketing tool because it's a powerful tool to reach decision makers all over the world, right? In addition to that, according to HubSpot, LinkedIn is one of the best social network for lead generation in the business to business space. So if you're in a B2B and you work with other companies and businesses, LinkedIn is by far one of your best tool 
to use um, to be able to get in front of the right people. All right. Then on the slide next to us, uh, on the right side, you have LinkedIn compared to other platforms. It's one of the most trusted platforms. Okay. So we have 2017, 2018, 2019. LinkedIn has number one ranked most trusted platform compared to other platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you can see all these different platforms, how they rank. LinkedIn has been ranked as the number one. Why? Because it's considered credible. This is where there's a lot of credibility that goes on on LinkedIn for people who want to take their business to the next level. So the big question is how to become more visible on LinkedIn. Um, you know, what's the process to do that? So to get started, I'm gonna start with one of the most basic things, and I want you guys to think about this, is your profile, all right? So for you to really get visibility on LinkedIn, you wanna start by updating your LinkedIn profile. And we're gonna dive into this. That's gonna be one of the biggest things that we do today. And one of the best ways to do that is before you even jump onto the profile to see how you're doing, you want to look for your social selling index score. All right. Some of you probably never heard of this term before. How many of you heard of the term social selling index score? You could type yes or no in the chat. Awesome. Good, good. No, 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 no. Good. So that's good. This is a good. All right, so let me show you guys something. Let's go on Google. All right, on Google, you could, all of you can do this right now. Type social selling index. All right, if you type that on Google, you're gonna see this that pops up the social selling index, SSI, LinkedIn sales solution. And you click on here. All right. LinkedIn will give you a specific number and I want you to click on get your score. So I want all of you guys to do this right now. Go to Google. I'm going to go back if you missed this. In the search bar, type social selling index. All right, like I just did. Then look for this link right here. The social selling index SSI LinkedIn sales solution. All right. When you do that, you click on here, it's gonna take you to this page, right? Measure your sales success. So it's gonna tell you your number. This number changes every day. And it's based on your profile, your LinkedIn activities, everything. So some month when I'm doing a lot of activities on LinkedIn, my score is super high. Some month when I'm super busy with clients and don't get a chance to post and be as active as I can be, my score go down. So this is a way that I also keep myself accountable. And I want you to all look at what's your score. You could type it in the chat. Let me know what your score is. All right. So right now, mine is a 75. I mean, I've been super busy this month. I haven't been able to be as active as I want to be on LinkedIn. It happens. All right. So with that said, I'm curious to know what is some of your score? 50, 6, 72. Good, good, good. 20, good. Anything over 50 is great, by the way, guys. So if it's under 50, that means it's room for improvement. If it's over 50, that means it's good. That means you're doing something good, all right? The highest it actually ever been, it's around 85, 86, 90s. I've never seen no one has 100 before, all right? So it's always room for improvement. Good, 42, 38, fantastic. So I'm going to show you, I'll show you today's, right, number, and I'm going to show you one of my older numbers so you can kind of see the difference. That's one of my older numbers here, right? Where it's 86, but today it's a 75. So one way I keep myself accountable to know how am I doing in terms of LinkedIn activities is I check my social selling index score. And there are several ways to improve it, all right? As you see here, it says establish your professional brand. Make this bigger so you guys can see this. Find the right people, engage with insights, build relationship. So these are the four criteria, And guess what? Establish your professional brand. This is huge because this is where your profile come in. Updating your profile, making changes to your profile. All right. That's really important. So the first thing we want to do is update profile background image. So I'm going to go back here. Right. See, right now it's 23. That means I need to keep updating and make changes to my profile. So I'm going to go on LinkedIn. 
you could click on the me button on the top right corner and view profile so you could see your profile or you can also click on your name on the left side here and it'll take you to your profile. Either way, it gets you right on your LinkedIn profile. So what does that mean? Well, there's a few things you gotta do. The first thing that I strongly recommend that everybody do is update this background image. Like you see, I have AGM here. So any one of us should do this. Why? Because allow your profile to stand out. So when somebody comes to your profile, it's separated from anybody else because it doesn't have that blue staticky background that LinkedIn gave us. So if I click here on that click button right here, right, you can upload. For you, it might be a little camera on the top right corner instead of a pencil. So you click on that camera and you wanna go where it says upload photo and you're able to upload like an image. Uh, sometimes it could be a banner of your company, it could be your logo, it could be that message, your two second message that you normally share. Right, or it could be like I do, I have my company and I have our contact information. So you have the option. Now you may wonder, okay, how do I do this? Because I don't really know what to put there. Uh, how do I find something to put there? Well, LinkedIn has a tool that can help you with that. If you go on a separate tab, this tool is called canva.com and it's free. Uh, they have pay version, but you can start with the free version. So on Canva, what you can do is you go to Canva, you go to templates and you put LinkedIn banner. And Canva will show you a bunch of free LinkedIn banner image that you can use. You could tweak them, you could put your name here, put the name of your company, change the colors. But this is a very simple way to find banner image to add to your LinkedIn profile. So you're able to add it in the back right here, all right? So before I go any further, do you guys have questions about adding the LinkedIn banner image on your profile? Can we add our logos? Yes, you can. Be careful, no to go. So, okay, good. <laughs> yes, you can add your logo. <laughs> and I'll try not to go too fast. All right. So that's one main thing you guys gotta focus on is your banner image allow your profile to stand out. You could change that once a year, you could change it once a quarter. So you have the option to do that. The other piece is your headshot, right? So if you have a picture that was cropped out from someone, you know, party or a gala that you went to, change that. You wanna add, a, think about LinkedIn as like your virtual networking platform. So you wanna make sure you have the right headshot, right, um, of you, just like you were going to a networking event so people can see exactly who you are. So you wanna add that here. And to make the change, just press on that pencil right here and click on that second pencil right here and be able to change your headshot, all right? The third thing is right here, your headline. Your headline is really important because this is more than just the title at the company, CEO at XYZ or VP of sales at XYZ. Your headline is a really good way for you to share how you help your clients. So think of it as your two second elevator pitch, right? So first you talked about your title, company, right? Then you have 120 characters and you could say, how do you help your clients? So helping our clients close deals with sales and advocate on LinkedIn ads. That's what we do, all right? So talk about that and use those characters so that make it easier if someone's looking for you and trying to identify, can you help them? You come up better on the search. Now, one of the recent, most recent feature that's LinkedIn ad is the ability to add a pronunciation. You see this little microphone I have here? Let me make it this bigger so you guys can see it. That microphone is, if you're on your mobile phone, you could click on here, right? And you're gonna hear me record how I say my name. Some of us have name that's not easy to say. It's not John, it's not Smith, just like mine, it's Joubert. It's a little different, right? So LinkedIn now allow you to record how you want people to say your name. So if somebody is reaching out to you or gonna meet with you, they could click on that little microphone and they could hear exactly how you say. <laughs> All right, so they could hear how you say your name so they could pronounce your name properly. So this is a really cool new tool that LinkedIn just added. And it's a good way that you can separate yourself from the passes by adding how people should say your name if you don't have a popular name, all right? Good, so let's keep going. 
The next piece is on the provide services, you could put the type of service that you provide so that make it easier for people to find you, right? Mine is LinkedIn, but specialized in lead generation, marketing consulting, social media marketing. So these keywords allow people to find me much easier. Then the next step is the about section. Before I go on the about section, do you guys have any questions about the top side on LinkedIn? If you do say yes, if you don't say no, you could type no in the chat. I wanna make sure I fully understand this piece before we move forward. Good, no, 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 perfect, awesome. All right, let's keep going. So the second part of your LinkedIn profile is the about section. So a lot of people think the about section is their resume. If you're in business or you're marketing a product or service, it's not. This is your marketing tool and you wanna structure it that way. You still wanna add something personal about you so people kinda of have understanding how, who you are and what you do. But this section should be about how you help your clients, all right? So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Mine, for example, the way it's set up is I share, thank you for visiting my LinkedIn profile, a little bit about me. I'm originally from Haiti, which I'm very proud of, and the different languages that I speak, and I help small and mid-sized companies, right? Then I share about our company, which I need to update this because it's 560, now it's 590 in 14 countries. And then here, what I did is I took different words that I heard from potential clients before we started working with them, right? How they felt about LinkedIn. It was overwhelming, confusing. So these are the challenges that people are having. So when it comes to your about section, think about your clients, what's important to them. You could either ask questions and then elaborate on the questions, or you could even do case studies. Or if you have testimonials, let's say you get testimonial emails from different clients you work with, you could copy two or three of those testimonials and add it in the about section and say, you know, from working with some of our clients, here's some of the things that they've said about us. All right, you could add that in the recommendation, but why not add one or two testimonial here or even case studies? That way, someone who is a potential client can visit your LinkedIn profile and feel comfortable, okay, this person could potentially help me, all right? You know, so think about your about section as the best place to market yourself and really highlight the pain points of your clients, case studies on how you help your clients and how they can get in contact with you, right? As you can see here at the end, I said, in addition, we have tons of free resources. So anybody that wanna see videos, they'll be able to click on this on their mobile phone and be able to see tons of video content that I have available phone number and email. So if they want to reach out to me, they literally can see it right here. So your about section is a great place to start sharing how you help your clients by using case studies, testimonials, and how they can get in contact with you if they need your help. All right. Then the next piece of this is the feature section. A lot of people never seen this before. Feature section allow you to put articles. And if I scroll over, you'll see video testimonials. So uh, one of those testimonials, I believe, is one of our guests here on the call. Uh, we had a chance to work together a few years back. You could see the video testimonials. So think about your clients, right? And also some of the articles, questions they're asking. If you write these articles, you publish them on LinkedIn, you have posts, you can share those here so more people will see them. And then you can also share video testimonials for clients that you work with. So anyone who wants to learn more about you, they can see those video testimonials. In addition, you can share more added value content that can help them. So what do I mean by that? To do that, if you don't have this or can't see this on your profile, scroll up and click on add profile section. Then you have the about, then right under the about you have featured. So if you click on featured, you have posts, articles, links, and media. So think about your business. What kind of business you have right now? What are some case studies that can benefit your clients? What are some testimonials that can benefit your potential clients? What are um, products and services that you're launching that you want to share more details about them? Add them here. Now, anyone that comes to your profile not only will be able to read about what you do, how you do it, how you can help them, but they can go deeper if they have questions, right? So if they want to know about Sales Navigator, they can click here and learn more about it. They want to know about 
if it's, is it worth the investment, they could read this and get back to me. So you want someone to spend more time on your profile, learning what you do, how you do, and how that can help them, all right? So with that said, before I jump any further, do you guys have any questions in the about section and the feature section? Have you guys used the feature section before? Let me know in the chat. No, no. Lori, you said, where is providing services? Uh, so once you do your profile, the providing services section is going to be two boxes. One that's going to say recruiter and the other one going to say providing services. Good question. All right. Yes, no, no. Good. So that means some of you guys can start using the feature section. Doesn't matter what industry you're in. Think about all the different publications that's in your industry that can benefit your clients. Testimonials, videos, articles, uh, those type of content. You want to add them in the feature section. Any additional questions? What is Sales Navigator? Ah, good question, Mahinder. I'm going to get to that in a few. <laughs> good. All right, let's keep going. So. Once you have that top part done on your profile, you're automatically going to see an increase um, in, in your score, in your social selling index score, right? Because you've added additional piece to your profile. And that's a good thing because now your profile is more optimized so people can find you easier. The next piece is the experience section. So what's important here that I see a lot of people missed out on is adding the logos of the different companies. Like for me, I have my podcast. We have a company page for that. I have my other company, 85 Capital Partners, where we invest in other businesses. And I have AGM, which is my core business, right? So you could see I added the logos to this. The way to do that is by creating a company page, which we're going to get into in a few, how to do a company page on LinkedIn. All right. Now, the other piece of it is when you have your experience section not only do you want to add the title but you can also add additional keywords that explain what you do let's say you're in uh benefits or insurance you could add that here as well right so the reason for that it it's part of the search algorithm so when somebody put a search put a specific keywords here on linkedin linkedin gonna pick up right here from your headline the about section the experience section and then if you scroll down some more, right, the skills and endorsement section. So you got to make sure you have the right keywords in those four different sections because that's what LinkedIn is picking up to populate your profile to the person that's looking for specific people. You don't want to kind of spam and put a bunch of keywords in there. You want to be strategic on how you do it. So if you're going to do it, do it in with story format, right? Like right here in the about section, do it here where it's helping people. So it doesn't seem very spammy, right? And it's easier for people to comprehend and be able to see, okay, yeah, this person can help me or no, they can't. All right. Then the other piece of this is the education. So if you attended any university or colleges, add them here for experience. You don't need to go back past 15 years. Um, normally I say if someone don't want, you know, they have 30, 40 years of experience, but they don't want people to know all that, you, you could stop at 15. That's a pretty good uh, number to stop at, right? And then when we go further down, the skills and endorsements, here you can put a lot of different skills and endorsement, but I want you to focus on some of the top three. And think about the top three people would think about before they're, you know, they reach out to you. Right, so if you're in insurance or you're in energy, right, they're gonna think about okay, energy allocation or budget allocation. You know, think about what are keywords that people are looking for when they're thinking about my product or service, and then use that in your skills and endorsement section. Okay, then the other piece of this is your recommendation, allowing people to recommend you. And we all know we're great at what we do, but it's even better when someone give you a recommendation and sometimes you have to ask so the way to do that is you want to go into the ask for recommendation add the person name mike i'm going to use you as an example hope you don't mind <laughs> right it's quite all right Joubert. all right good 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 you know uh work with mike's every group mike work with you but different companies so you choose how you want to ask the recommendation 
all right, my current position. And then next, then I'm gonna say, hi, Mike, could you write me a recommendation? I wanna be more specific about my session on LinkedIn for beginner. When you're specific like that, it's very helpful, especially if you work with the person a long time ago, it's easier for them to remember. Um, the other trick you can do is if it's somebody that's super busy, you can maybe write a, a draft for them and say, hey, I'll send you a draft. You review it, you tweak it, put it in your own word, and then you could use that. So that saves that person a lot of time. All right, then send. It's all yours, Mike. Hopefully you give me one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go any further, let me think about it for a little while. <laughs> Not a problem. Before we go any further, um, I would like to revise one or two of you guys LinkedIn profile and give you some feedback live. Who's interested in that? You could put your name in the chat or say, yes, I am. And I'll be happy to do that before we move to the next piece. Good, sure. All right. So this is Steph, Steph, Stephen. Quick. Get, we'll do Stephen really quickly, and then I'll go back in to pick someone else. Stephen, if you want to unmute yourself, I want to make sure I find the right one. Uh, which yes. one at the top? Perfect. So you're an architect? Yes. Awesome. Ooh, I love this. I actually went there before, so this is good. It was, awesome. It was, See? it was quite fun from a trip. <laughs> I know it's so beautiful when you see it face to face. So good. So you have yourself nice picture. You on the phone? Looks like you're busy. Um, any reason why you chose that picture? Um, it felt right to me. I'm sort of serious about the architecture and design, so that mm -hmm. sort of conveys the seriousness of how I treat my job and my clients' good. Uh, project. Good, good, good. So quick suggestion here: architect, designer, marketing, business development partner, and Perret. I would elaborate more as an architect. How do you help your clients? Are you working with residential or commercial? Uh, commercial. Good. Primarily. So you could put partner at Soret, Sumgen Architects, and then said helping our clients with their next big projects or their next development projects. So that it, you know, it, it shows how you're helping the clients. All right. So that's one quick tweak I would do. Second, let's see the about section. I'm an architect, been in the business. 32 years, wow, that's awesome. A lot of experience. All right, clients, I enjoy working with. Uh, good. I would even go further if you wanna share any testimonials, you can, but I think sure. one yeah, big yeah. opportunity for you here is the feature section. You're an architect, people need to see the projects that you do. Right, right? Yeah. So adding those projects in your feature section is huge, okay? So definitely do that. Like I would use the feature section at five, six, seven projects every three months. So people can have an idea what you do because you don't know who's going to check your LinkedIn profile while you're not on LinkedIn. <laughs> so there could be some opportunity for clients there. Right. All right. Um, par partner, give me a little more details here, right? Because you work with specific type of companies, specific commercial projects, right? I don't know, maybe schools and so forth. So give me a little more detail here to show, you know, some of the niches that you guys touch. Okay. Gotcha. Good. Sustainable design submittals. I'm guessing that's a big one for the architectural world, right? Yes. Okay, good. Architectural design. Good. Awesome. Recommendation, my friend. We need some recommendation here. Really? All right. So good job. Good job so far. That's a good starting point. Let me see your contact info. All right, so we're not connected, so I can't see it, but send me an invitation to connect, guys, if we're not connected yet. And great work. Now let's try someone else. Thank you. You're welcome, Mahinder Gore. Did I say your name right? Just wanna make sure I'm saying it right. And you could unmute. Yep, you got it. Awesome, all right, so let's find you on LinkedIn. What's the name of your company? Um, it's um, Extra Mile Micro Methods Incorporated. That's what I have in there. But okay. I just opened up a Venture X in Parsippany, in New Jersey. Gotcha. So, um, so I put your name in there. I'm not seeing you. Okay, there you go. I probably messed that up. There we go. Yeah, I put. I missed the the second R. All right. Perfect. Good. 
Mahender, good, good. All right, so first thing first, the background image like I was talking about. So you could use the logo of your company or you could use the, the slogan that you guys have. You could also, you could use Canva um, to, you know, to get that set up if you're doing it yourself or if you have a designer that can do it for you. All right, so pictures, good. Uh, Hands-on technologies to demonstrate a success to help organizations simplify their costs. Good, I like this. This is good. Now let's dive into this part. Yes, this got to change. It seems very technical, right? It's very keyword heavy. It's not telling a story. You want to tell a story here, all right? So you have all these skill sets. You've done all these things. How can you structure it so that it benefits someone who is a client or potential clients to read it. Make sense? Yeah. Fantastic. And if you have any featured articles that you wrote that you want to add in the feature section, I would strongly recommend it because it shows some of your skill sets in disaster recovery and so forth. We got to get you a company page. I'm assuming you don't have one yet, right? No, not yet. All right. We're going to talk about it in a second uh, so that you can have the logo shows up here. Good, good educations, good certifications, awesome. All right, so these are specific terms. Uh, would your clients know these terms if they see them? Yes. Okay, the person that's hiring, you will know what Solaris is and Unix and shell yeah. scripting. Okay, yeah. good, so it, it, it fits the potential clients. We gotta get your recommendation, my friend. <laughs> yeah. You've given one, but you haven't got any, so we need to get one on here. All right. The fact that you have the three languages, that's fantastic. I love that. It's a great way to create rapport with people. So that's good, especially if someone else speak, you know, Hindi or Telugu, they'll mm -hmm. want, they're like, oh, they'll feel connected to you already. So that's a good move. All right. Is that helpful? Yep. Very good. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the second part of this. All right. So we talk about the profile. We just went through all this. Right, section, featured, education, recommendation. Now let's talk about the company page. So the big difference is a profile is personal. A company page is for your brand, your organization, right? So people can follow your company page. People can follow or connect with you as a person. When you're on LinkedIn, you use the company page to create brand awareness have your followers know what's going on in the business, share the culture of the organization, generate leads on using LinkedIn advertising. You use the personal profile to create that personal brand, which we're gonna talk a bit more about later. Uh, posting content, engaging people one-on-one, -on -one, setting up appointments and so forth, right? So that's the big difference. Now, if you don't have a company page and you wonder, how do I create one? So to create one, it's very, very simple, guys. On the top right corner where it says work, click on work, and then scroll down where it says here, LinkedIn Business Services. You wanna scroll all the way down and you click on create a company page right here. So when you do that, it's gonna take you here. So it depends on how big your company is. If it's a small business, less than 200 employees, use this one. If it's a mid-market company, use this one. Right. If you use a school or a university, use this one. And this is showcase pages if you have additional products that you that target specific audience. But most of us probably is in this one, small business. So click on small business, put the name of your company, right? And the URL is gonna come here. If I put XYZ company. Oh, there's a company called XYZ already. <laughs> Let's say I put XYZ company, uh, XYZ123 company, and then I put the website. Then I choose the industry. Now, the industry on LinkedIn is not like the SIC code. It's a little bit different. So you got to think on your business in a like, uh, high-level view and say, okay, um, you know, if I'm a specific manufacturer, do I do more plastic or I'm in chemical? Or I'm in nanotech, really identify that. Then company size, uh, if it's just you, right, zero to one. If it's you and a few team members, two to 10. Company type, I normally say if it's a private company, go with privately held. 
all right that's the best one to choose us uh, you could do self-employed or sole proprietorship but i normally say go with privately held because it's a private company if it's public go with public if it's a non-profit click non-profit once you have that set up you add the logo you add your tagline and you verify and then linkedin will automatically create your company page for you so i'm going to show you guys a couple company pages and then we're going to dive deeper on how you can use them by using mine as an example so google right if i type google in a search and click google this is google's company page all right so as you can see they have a banner image that show the different cultures you know their core values create design code built for everyone then if you scroll down they have the logo right here we all familiar with google in the about section they have more of a description of their mission you know what they do and so forth right and i can go further if i go to the about section give me a full overview what i love about linkedin it automatically tell me a little bit about their stock since they're a public fund company tell me about funding and so forth so that's the power of company page you get so much data about companies right and because the larger company i'm able to see the life meaning the culture within google so this is great if you're looking to hire a lot of people leverage that because it's recruiting marketing 101, having the right LinkedIn company page that display the culture of the organization. Candidates look for that. They're trying to figure out, is this somewhere they want to work? All right, jobs, if you're looking to hire, you can do ads here, just like Google is doing. You could do job ads and target specific people that see your ad that potentially could end up being hired, All right? People, this is huge. This is where you can share the people that you, you that work at the company so google has like 200,000 plus employees right with 200,000 plus employees you could see where they live and this is a great tool for prospecting guys because if you're looking to target larger companies i can come here i can put oh i'm looking for people in marketing at google right marketing and I can choose Greater New York City. So I want people that's in marketing, that work at Google, in the Greater New York City. If I scroll down, right? Head of Carpet Market, Marketing Google Cloud, Multicultural Marketing, Head of Marketing at Google. So I can literally find everyone who are head of marketing at Google. So think about if you're going after large companies and you're trying to figure out who are the right people in here I need to work with? With your free account, you can just type the name of the company. If they have a LinkedIn company page, click on people so you can see all the employees. And then you can dive into it by using keywords to find, you know, who's who on Google. Like we have Julian, who is the head of marketing at Google. I can click on his profile, right? I'm like, wow, this is the guy that's running Google right <laughs> in terms of marketing that's someone i want to know so that is extremely powerful guys and this is a great way to network with large companies mid-market companies finding the decision makers that you're looking for okay now we did that with the free account with the premium like sales navigator which is one of the pay subscription on linkedin we can get deeper in some of the targeting that's what we'll discuss next week all right so let's keep going any questions about the company page before i show you more on what's possible if you guys have questions put it in the chat all right no questions good all right so i want to share something else with you guys and we all have access to this if you want to know what your potential clients or customers or competitors are doing on linkedin in terms of advertising LinkedIn allow you to scroll down in their company page and click on ads and you'll be able to see some of the most recent ads that they ran the past six months. So this is a huge type of data, right? You could kind of tell, okay, what are these companies are focusing on? What's important to them? You know, even your competitors. If they're running ads on LinkedIn, <laughs> you'll be able to see that. And you'd be shocked how many people are not running ads on LinkedIn. All right? Can get so that's one way you can do that. All right. So um to keep going, I'm gonna share uh the back office of a company page. 
And if you guys have questions about the company page, please let me know. All right. So one cool thing with the LinkedIn company page, this is my back office, it shows me is everything that's going on. Um, if I click on analytics and I click on followers, I'm able to see if I have a company page who is in my followers, right? So for example, I can see who are all my followers on my company page. I can see if I have past clients, if I have potential clients. So this is a really good way to learn about who's following your company page, who's interested in your content on your company page. So I want you to think about if you have a company page, start looking at who are the followers in your company page. All right. So before I go any further, do you guys have any questions on the company page? Let me know your thoughts. All right. And I want to grab the question. Where do you click on analytics? Good question, Jen. All right. So here's how you do it. So when you're on the company page, you're in the back office, make sure you're one of the admin. You see here where it says analytics. You click here on the drop down button and then you scroll down where it says followers and you click on followers. It should say new on it because this is brand new. We now just have access to this and it will show you all the followers on your company page, who exactly these people are. Some of them are chamber members, by the way, guys. So thank you for following my page. <laughs> Good, I'm glad this is helpful. Anyone else have any questions about the company page before we move on to the next piece? All right, good, awesome. So on company page, we cover how to create one, what to see. Now let's figure out how do you stay top of mind? Now you have your company page, you have your profile. So how do you stay top of mind? Because when you stay top of mind, it allows you to people to know you, like you and trust you all right so this is how you get more people to know who you are by staying top of mind and one of the best way to do that on linkedin is by posting content so what do i mean by that if i go to the home page this is your best friend if you want more visibility on linkedin posting content right so if i click on this little three dots here right so i can do photo video articles I'm able to write my thoughts here and you don't want to just post an article link and you know, people will see that a lot of people do that and LinkedIn doesn't value that as much anymore. You want to focus on how do I share a story, right? Let's say throughout your day, you help a client. So you got a testimonial, share that you're doing an event. Um, you want people to know about it, share that you, you have some thoughts or lesson that you learned that can benefit people share that. So to give you guys an idea, you're posting, you don't have to do everything. You just gotta be consistent. And you don't need to post every day. You just have to be consistent. It could be once a week, twice a week, once a month, right? So think about um, doing video posting, third party articles, experience, or interviews, lesson learned, testimonials, case studies, right? Guides, so think about that. How is that beneficial to people? And if you're having issues coming up on what to write, there's a site that you guys can go to called alsoask.com. So if I go on link on Google and I type alsoask.com, also ask what it does. I'm gonna make it smaller so you guys can see it and go to US, okay? So here I can put any keywords that I'm looking for and it will scratch all over the internet and find questions that people are always asking. So if you're in real estate, you're an architect, you're in insurance, you know, whatever you in, you could put that right here. And all of a sudden it's going to tell me different questions that people are asking. And I can use that as a way to come up with topics that I can do posts about. I can do videos. I can do blogs. I can do different posts about the questions that people are asking. All right. So, this is a really good way to get more people to know about your content because this tool with just adding the keywords help you find the questions that people are asking and then now you can do your post. So you can do posts, a photo, video, or even write in articles. All right, so I'll give you guys an example. One article that I wrote, now it's indexed on Google because I wrote it about three years ago. Yeah, about three years ago was when you Google three tips, a thousand views on LinkedIn, 
the first articles that pop up to get your LinkedIn post to a thousand plus views is mine, right? This article generate a lot of leads, right? So articles, don't worry if you're not getting a lot of uh, likes or comments, just share the content and that content can be used several ways. So by, we published this article in 2017 and it still shows on Google's today, right? It shares on how people can use LinkedIn to get more views on their content. And guess what? At the end of the article, when somebody click here for free webinar, it takes them to my landing page where they can register for one of our webinars. So this is a way that I generate leads and we get about 100 to 200 registration a week for specific webinars that we do on LinkedIn. So think about how you can use similar approach, publishing articles and get people to sign up for your webinars, generate the leads and so forth. All right. So this is the power of using content on LinkedIn. You don't have to do everything. Focus on one thing. If it's going to be articles, great. If it's going to be videos because you love to be on videos, fantastic. I have colleagues that have generated six and seven figure businesses by using LinkedIn videos. So I want you to think about it doesn't have to be everything. All right. And I want to share another example and then I'm going to jump into questions. In addition to doing posting videos, articles, you can do polls. So here's one poll that I did about two months ago on LinkedIn, right? On to find out how do people um, like to learn, right? Webinars or online courses. So people voted and the people that voted it, I can click on the 24 votes. I can see the 12 one that wants live webinar. I can see the 12 one that wants online courses. This is a huge way to find out who is interested in a specific product or service that you offered. Because now, like I did, I reached out to people that were interested in the webinar and invite them to my webinar. And guess what? By inviting them to the webinar, we were able to generate new business from that. So think about how you can use poll as a way to get in front of the right audience. All right? Then I'm going to give you guys another example, and then we're going to jump onto questions. Here's one of our clients. Her name is Heather. She owns a podcast advertising company. And... This is how she write her blog content and post on LinkedIn. She, ha she has a structure where she's sharing lessons and tips. And then she has a video, right? Is podcast optimized and she has subtitles on there. Then the most powerful part that a lot of people miss when it comes to content on LinkedIn to create visibility is engagement. You want more people to engage with your post. So your first hour is crucial, right? You wanna put likes, comments, and you can engage people. So when you post something, like it. Someone else like it, comment on it, say thank you, and tag their name on there. So that way you start a conversation and it shows up in a notification. So that's a good way to stay top of mind. All right? So before I go any further, do you guys have any questions? Yes. Okay, good. Um, Patty, where is the background conversation coming from? Sorry about that. My wife is in the other room teaching, and that's probably where you're hearing the background combo. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. Next question. Do you guys have any additional questions about posting content on LinkedIn? All right. Example of things to post. Sorry, can't write fast enough. All right. Um, you could focus on videos. You could focus on um, blogs. Uh, think about, you know, what's important to your clients. So one of the best way is if you hear a lot of questions that you hear those questions all the time, write those questions down because these could be some of the posts that you could start with. And the other way is using the tool called also ask, like I mentioned, and just look for a specific keyword, right? Like I put LinkedIn because that's the industry I'm in. I could put real estate. And all of a sudden I have tons of different real estate questions here all right so that's one example and how do you poll okay good so polling if you click on more down here create a poll and you start with adding the questions you want to ask and you put options for people and you could choose how long you want the poll to run one day three days one week and two weeks all right great question any additional questions about Content on LinkedIn. Awesome. Good, good. Yes, and this is being recorded, so you guys will be able to go back and see it as well. 
All right, so we talk about content. Um, I want to give you guys some resources. We talk about Canva. We talk about also asked. And then we talk about rev.com. Rev.com, if you guys never heard of this tool, if I go to rev.com, this will allow when I do videos to add captions and subtitles. So if you guys wanna add caption and subtitles to your video, like our clients Heather did in her post, right? You could use rev.com. So guys, any additional questions before we finish up? All right, let's see here. Advantage of pay versus free. Yes. Yusuf, great question. So, Sales Navigator, some info. Good. All right. So, a couple of things. With the free LinkedIn, guys, you can do a few things. You can post content. You can post tons of content. That's a great way to start. You could go here and do basic search. Let's say if I want to search for CPA, right? I can do a quick search for CPA, be able to find tons of people. But what I'll notice is some of them said LinkedIn members, so I'm not able to access those people if they're like third degree connections. And I can see who view my profile. So if I go to profile, I'll see the last five people that view my profile. With the pay account, um, I don't have a limit on who view my profile. I can see the people who view my profile the past 90 days. I can see all of them right here, right? Then the other piece of it, thank you for everyone who viewed my profile and connected with me. Um, I don't have a limit in terms of searches. I can search and not limit it after a certain amount of search. So if I want architect, right, I can search for architects, I can filter them, and I'm not limited. The difference between that premium account, which is in a free account, is $59.99 a month. Then there's another one called Sales Navigator, which we're going to get into next session next month. That will allow me to target people. Meaning if I wanna find the architect who's been in business for 10 years, right? And who just hired three people in their firm and got two of them that became partner in the past 90 days, I know that. That's how deep I can go. Or if I wanna find that startup company who just got their second round of funding at $20 million, I know that. That's the type of data that you get with Sales Navigator. You're able to get more data, it's more targeted, so you're able to get more information, quality information, so you can reach out to your prospect at the best time. All right, so that's the main difference between the two. So hopefully that answered that question. Good, yes, the next one is August 28th. And <laughs> so someone else asked another question. All right, uh, thank you, thank you. How do I find who admin is for our company page. I think someone was, okay. Yeah, so if you lose the admin for your company page and they don't no longer work with your business, email me, I'll send you an email that you can use to reach out to LinkedIn and then they can help you find someone else. So with that said, guys, just wanna give you guys one last thing as a gift. If any of you are interested, go to this website, freelinkedinaudit.com. You could take a picture of it and you'll be able to set up a free audit session with me for attending this and we'll go dive deeper into LinkedIn and really help you. And our next mm -hmm. session on LinkedIn Sales Navigator is on August 26, 2020. Yeah, 26, sorry about that, Jill Bear. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Do you guys have any last questions before we finish up? And you can unmute yourself if you want. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Kathy, thank you, Doug. Can you put that website on again, please? The one that says the yes. free LinkedIn audit yes Put that back on thank you yeah so you can go to free linkedin audit.com or connect with me on linkedin whichever and set up a time for a free audit session with me so i can go through your profile give you some ideas and if it makes sense we'll work together if not take the the ideas and uh, strategy i gave you and implement execute 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 all right that's it for me mike and when you bear Awesome job. Thank you so much. Did you see the recommendation I, I did for you when you just not, requested it? Not yet. I'm about to. <laughs> well, go ahead and read it to the group. <laughs> see what they think. All right. Let's do this. And I welcome any more recommendation from uh, all of you guys. Let me refresh my screen. While Gilbert's looking for that, 
I just want to thank Gilbert for doing such a great job here and helping our chamber members get more involved with LinkedIn. Uh, I, I, I need to get more involved myself. You know, I do look this, at it a lot. This is where we're going to dive deeper in some of your targeting. Make sure you go and fix your profile and company page because then we're going to start targeting the right people. Then it's going to be exciting.